Hi, this is Mike Hibbert. I'm back with uh, another tutorial in on, on the subject of Python programming. And uh, this time round, we're going to have a look at the subject of classes. Now, classes are what programmers use to model real life situations or things in real life. For instance, uh, a web developer might use a class to to model uh, a page and the page might have various different features like uh, a title or a header or body copy or it might even have some some different types of behavior like ajax in other situations programmers might use classes to to mimic uh, user users in a system so a user might have a, a username or a, a password and we'd use a class to basically um, identify them within our programming system and then process their information using that class. Uh, yet another example is potentially a robot for instance. Um, if somebody uh, designs one specific type of robot it might have some core fun functionality and we might want all of our robots that we design in the future to have that basic functionality but we don't want to rewrite the code so this is where classes come into play because classes allow you to define a basic set of functions that something can have and then you can then build on that and have derivatives of that and different permutations of that basic system and then enhance it and bring in new functionality now uh, the example that i prepared for you is basically the example of um, of a bird now birds are, are all pretty um, similar in the feature that they all make a noise of some description. Well, all the ones I do, I know, do anyway, and they all fly. So I've got to model a bird. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to define a class. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to design, define the bird class, which is the basic set of bird. And then we're going to basically go on to then model two further other types of bird which then modify the basic functionality of a bird so that they can be used as specific instances or different variations of of the class and type bird so we've written class bird which basically tells python this is going to be a class and the following lines which are indented will be its definition um, with all languages you have something called a constructor now the constructor basically is is the code that happens whenever you create an instance of a class so in the instance of our bird class we want to basically say that when this this class is instance when it is init or initialized we want to pass in a parameter of type kind and type call now they can be anything but in the case of this they're going to be strings so kind is going to be what kind of bird and call is going to say what kind of noise does it do what kind of call does the bird have now you'll notice this thing here which is the word self with classes what we're basically doing inside of the python interpreter is we're creating an area of memory that basically stores the data for a bird now if we made more than one bird we'd have separate different areas of memory where those birds data would exist so when we pass that self word across what we're really passing is a reference to where that specific bird that we're dealing with right here right now is stored now We'll pass that, those parameters in to the function. Now what we're going to do with them? Well, we want to remember them for future use. So what we're going to do is we're going to say self.call equals call. This basically creates an, a variable within the current version of this bird and then sets the parameter that we've just passed across here into there to store it for later use. And the same with our kind variable here. We create another 
var variable within this bird's instance and assign it the kind of bird that it is. And that's all we're going to do with the constructor. Now later on, we're going to give the bird some what we call core functionality, or it, you might know them as um, as member methods. Now we've got a method here, or a, a class method, that says do underscore call with the uh, argument of self. So we're saying do the call on the current version of this bird that we're using. And with that, all we're literally going to do is we're going to print out a string. And within that string, if, if you saw my previous tutorial, you'll, you'll have noticed that we're using this pattern again, where we're putting place markers in of type string signified by the S for two words within this string. Then we have the percentage just to say that the, the next few uh, parts of this line are going to signify what actually goes in there. Open it, something called a tuple. And if you don't know what tuples are, I suggest you go and Google those. I might even do that in a, in a, in a tutorial in the future if I get enough requests to cover things like strings and tuples and, and lists and that sort of thing. Any comments down below, that'd be fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass in this current instance's version of kind and of call. And we're going to put kind in this slot here and call in that slot there. Right, so that's our basic bird. Now, say we have uh, a specific kind of bird that we want to make. We now have the basic functionality to create a bird and have it do a call. So we don't have to write that again. All we do from now on is create another class instance that can use that ability. So the first bird we're going to do is a parrot. Now you'll notice in, in the line above when we put bird, we didn't have these brackets like we do down here. And that's because bird is what we call a base class. It doesn't inherit from anything. It doesn't have any other functionality other than the functionality that we defined underneath here. But the parrot does it inherits its abilities from our bird class so therefore we basically put the word bird in brackets there if it inherited from any other class we could then put another comma and go other class if needs be not in this case though because we're just inheriting from the bird and we're going to make a new class of the type parrot Again, we make the constructor. And in this case, we don't have any arguments other than the current instance of the bird. There are no kind or call because a parrot, by our definition, should have a certain set of parameters that are fixed. So we don't pass those in to, a para uh, to the parrot instance, but we do the next line instead. We go bird dot init or call the birds constructor with our current reference to this bird that we're creating then we pass in the parameters to the bird instance which says pass the kind up here as a parrot and the call as car which basically was a parrot is And we're going to make another class, a different bird type, a cuckoo this time. Again, we're going to not pass any in, any variables in the class constructor. We're going to pass it to the bird and then hard code in cuckoo as the type of bird or the kind of bird, sorry. And then its call is obviously, yes, you've guessed it, cuckoo. Right, now we're going to test this. So as always, when this is the main script we're going to run, we want the name, if it's main, to run the following functions. We're going to make an instance of Parrot 
by saying parrot equals the class kind parrot. I'm going to make an instance of cuckoo by saying cuckoo equals the class or a new version of the class cuckoo. Then we're going to say parrot do call. Now notice in our parrot we haven't defined that here but in our base class bird we have so everything that bird has parrot can use and the same goes for the cuckoo so we're also going to get the cuckoo to do their call also and that should basically output if we're lucky that a parrot goes car and a cuckoo goes cuckoo if all goes well so let's run that let's see what happens there you go in the debug IO window we see the output from the program where we've inserted the kind of bird and its call and for each instance of these classes which inherit from the bird class it outputs the correct line now that's just a very basic example you can do all sorts of classes um, you can model anything and any everything that physically exists or even exists as purely an idea that you've thought up um, classes can be used in all sorts of applications from web applications to desktop applications to building AI systems even computer games and in spe especially with computer games classes like parrot and cuckoo well you can imagine those being used in something like angry birds right that's the end of this tutorial if you've got any comments then please enter them down below any suggestions please give them as well i'm f perfectly happy to do any suggestions that anybody would like to see tutorials on right that's all from me thanks very much for listening and thanks for your time and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video if it was doing you any good as a programmer bye